first-person action role-playing game that has as much depth as The Witcher and Dark Souls, while still feeling unique. As expected of the developers behind the Ninja Gaiden series, Team Ninja, Neo's combat is fast-paced and strategic. Players can equip up to two close combat and two ranged weapons at a time, varying from swords, axes, lances, and even cannons, and can switch between them instantaneously. In battle, players switch between a low, mid, and high fighting stance to outmaneuver enemies, creating a rock, paper, scissors, trial and error style combat system. Like Dark Souls, you have a stamina system called Key here. Both offensive and defensive moves as well as fast paced movement require Key, which if used up, results in your character stunned and vulnerable to a fatal blow. This risk and reward mechanic is at Neo's core, as enemies have their own Key, allowing you to exploit their movement and tire them out before dealing a critical hit. Combat is visually impressive and definitely the highlight of the game. Neo's similarities with Dark Souls extend to its character progression as well. Using the souls of defeated enemies referred to as Amrita, you level up, improving one of your many stats. Leveling up rewards you with weapon skill points which can be used to learn new combos and final moves for certain weapon types, such as shattering the earth with an axe or bolting around the enemy swinging your blade. You can also improve your weapon skills by simply using a weapon, encouraging you to master one or two. You can equip the guardian spirits based on Japanese folklore as well, such as a fox and raven that provide unique buffs and weaknesses, as well as enchant your weapon with a specific element. There is a great deal of micromanaging your equipment here, as I found myself often finding new types of weapons and usable items, such as a ball of poisonous gas that I would hastily try to master. This sense of experiential learning in Neo is part of what makes interacting with its world so engaging. The world building and level design is also very clearly inspired by Japanese folklore. Players visit small shrines to level up and even help tree spirits return to nearby shrines, rewarding them with a greater chance of discovering rare items. Areas vary from imperial Japanese castles, traditional Japanese inns, and shipwrecked coves, with basic enemies mostly made up of samurai and shogun. Boss battles, however, are heavily inspired by Japanese mythology, particularly that of the Oni, Ice Queen, and Spider Lady, which all require a certain strategy to beat, much like The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt's bestiary and many creatures in the Soul series. Neo is set to be an exciting strategic action game that rewards patience and strategic thinking. The emphasis on Japanese culture and folklore, and the various weapon types and engaging combat should interest hardcore action role-playing fans and those interested in Japanese mythology. Neo will release worldwide on the PlayStation 4 on the 9th of February next year. For more on Neo and other upcoming video games, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Retours.